Hello all. Welcome to part 11 of the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert course and certification. In this video, we will continue looking at ports exploitation and see how you can backdoor the victim using Metasploit. This video is part of the SMFE course and certification. If you are interested in enrolling, please visit securitytube.net slash SMFE. Our certifications are currently being taken by students from over 30 plus countries around the world. And this video has been made available free of charge uh, to SecurityTube users as part of our free InfoSec education vision and mission. Okay, so we've already looked at the first four phases of post exploitation. Now let's look at backdoors and rootkits. Now, Metasploit ships with two different backdooring options. One is called persistence and the other met SVC. Let's look at persistence first. So persistence actually creates a backdoor which tries to connect back to the attacker's Metasploit instance uh, and you can configure the connect back to happen at system boot or user logon. You can even configure the time between the different connect back attempts in case currently the attacker machine is not up and you would want the backdoor to keep trying to connect to you. Now how does it work? Well under the hood Persistence creates a VBS script which executes on the victim and adds appropriate registry entries to auto run. Now you can even install this remotely, but please note that after a reboot, you would need to find the PID of the existing process uh, under which the persistence backdoor is running to kill the current instance as well. Now let's go back and look at a demo of how persistence works. So this is our victim machine, Windows XP. And here is the attacker machine. Let's exploit the victim. There you go. Now let's actually look at persistence and see the different options we have, right? So the first thing you want to do is automatically start a matching multi handler so that when the persistence backdoor connects back to this Metasploit instance, there is something waiting to complete the connection. The second thing is uh, location where to write the payload. This is where the VBS script will be located. For the time being, let's actually keep it as C drive so that we can find it. Payload, let's use the default one, which is Metapreter using reverse TCP. And what we want is basically, uh, well, we want the agent to automatically start when the system boots, right? The number of seconds to wait between each connection attempt, let's keep this as 10. The port on the remote host where Metasploit will be listening let's say 443 so that this can pass through uh, most firewalls and then the IP on which the attacker machine is running on which is 1.10 right seems okay let's run persistence now keep a track of this file because this is an RC file which will allow us to uninstall and delete this backdoor at a later time so looks like this has been installed there and if you notice it just connected back to give us a new metapreter session right so if I make this metapreter session background you will actually find two metapreter sessions currently waiting for us right fantastic and this is the new one which was created by the persistence backdoor now if you want to look at what really happened if you go to C drive, you would actually notice that there is this Visual Basic script 
which is there this is what contains the persistence backdoor now let's try and see what happens when the system reboots so let me actually close the sessions first by going into them exit now let me go into the next session which is 17 reboot the system and exit the matter pedal session right and let's see what happens so persistence once the system boots should auto connect back to us to give us a new session so right now we have no active sessions let's see what happens right windows is shutting down and still shutting down so this session is something which actually get closed automatically to be honest right and now the system is rebooting once again right And there you go, right? The persistence backdoor connected back to us after the system rebooted. So now we have a metapreter session to which we can comfortably connect. Right? This is our victim machine. Fantastic. Now, if you want to remove this backdoor, uh, we will need to locate the resource file which contains the name of the temporary file in which the VB script was created, etc. All you need to do is use the uh, command resource, give it the resource file which was created when uh, we had just started persistence and then run it. There you go. Now the place where it says operation failed is nothing but the PID of the persistence script which is running in memory. Now, the time when this script was created, at that time it had a different PID, but now this invocation has a new one. But nothing to worry, even if you cannot find the current PID, because once the system reboots, what you would find is that uh, it is not going to be rerun anymore. We've also uninstalled the registry entry, which you can see here clearly, right? So let's do the following. Let's reboot the machine just to verify that it has been removed right let's wait for the machine to restart there you go and notice at this point after the machine reboots, you would not find a connect back happening, right? Awesome. Now let's look at the other backdoor which ships with Metasploit, which is MetSVC. So to run MetSVC, you simply have to type in, uh, first you need to exploit, of course. <laughs> let's exploit the victim once again, get a Metapredal session and then let's look at the help file for metspc there you go so it's generally a good idea to automatically start a matching handler so let's say run metspc a so this starts the handler as well and what this does is this is going to create a windows service and this service will actually run a metapreter service on port 31337 and there you go, if you notice, we already have the Metapreter session connecting back to us, which actually now gives us two sessions. Right? So similar, uh, basically to the other case, we can go ahead, reboot the whole system, and this would be available to us. So let me just reboot the system. Let me type in reboot. Exit from here. 
right? Look at jobs, we have two multi-handler sessions running, which is okay. So let's wait for the system to reboot. There we go. Let's log back in. Right. Now, in order to connect back, you need to uh, go ahead use one of the existing running handlers or you could just set up a new one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the payload to be Windows met SVC bind TCP and the remote port and if I just look at the show options for a second is already set to 31337 right and uh, what you could very simply do is just hit exploit and we are connected back to the remote system right this is how uh, in this case however please remember which is the option 2 the met svc backdoor is just listening there for us right should be a bad idea because port scanners and all of that can find it also it's not password protected which means anyone who finds it can actually connect to it right so the machine you pawned can very easily be owned by someone else now, when you are done with MetSVC, you can just use MetSVC-R to remove it from the remote system. What you need to remember is when we installed MetSVC, at that time we had uploaded an exe file and a DLL and all of that stuff, right? Remember that you will need to delete this on your own, right? This does not, this cleanup script does not delete it. Okay, fantastic. Well, so that's all for this video. But before we end, what I wanted to touch upon is third party backdoors and rootkits. Now, once you've broken into the system, it is extremely trivial to upload your own custom backdoors and rootkits and install all of that on the remote system. One of the sites which I can recommend to learn more about rootkits is rootkit.com. And if you want to go ahead and look at backdoors, there are tons of them out there. Have a look at Hacker Defender. It's been there for quite some time. That's all for this video, which is part of the Security Tube Metasploit Framework Expert course and certification. Have a look at securitytube.net slash SMFE for more details. Thank you very much. See you in the next video. People watching on Security Tube, please leave your comments behind.